So, welcome again in my course power electronics application in power system. In the last few lecture, I am uh, discussing the application of static bar compensator in uh, uh, power systems and in the last lecture, I, I discuss uh, or I started discussion on how a SVC placement at the midpoint of a a lossless short transmission line uh, can improve the synchronizing power coefficient of the system. I explained uh, in the last lecture what is synchronizing power coefficient and why it is so important and uh, what is its role in power system stability. So, therefore, we will continue to this derivation in this lecture as well. We will come up with the expression uh, for the synchronizing power coefficient for a uh, lossless short transmission line. Okay. So, let us move forward and see what we are discussing in the last class. So, we, we are here actually we are deriving the expression of synchronizing power coefficient, synchronizing power coefficient of a midpoint SPC compensated line. Right. Now, we consider that at the midpoint of this transmission line we have a SVC and SVC is modeled as a variable uh, susceptance. Okay. So, here is our assumption is that we consider lossless line, we consider short line. Now, in addition to that we will consider also another assumption that the line is symmetrical in nature. As of now we have seen all the derivation uh, for this particular course, I consider this assumption as well that is the line is symmetrical. Now, what do we mean by symmetrical transmission line? Symmetrical transmission line implies to uh, the fact that the voltage at the both end of the line would be uh, regulated and they would be made uh, constant. They would be uh, equal and they would be made constant irrespective of the loading. Okay. So, for this, uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, system here, we, we arrive at this expression. So, we will move forward with this expression, we will let us find out uh, this expression for synchronizing power coefficient. So, I will write again derivation of derivation of synchronizing power coefficient coefficient for symmetrical lossless uh, short transmission line. Here our assumptions are we have symmetrical lossless short transmission line, short transmission line. Now, with this assumption we will proceed further and we will rewrite the expression that we receive uh, or that we uh, derive in the last lecture that is these two expressions, uh, this voltage representing this V m is basically representing the voltage at the midpoint as you can see. So, it is the voltage at the midpoint and del m is basically representing the uh, angle of the voltage at the midpoint of the transmission line. So, therefore, we, we will rewrite this expression once again V m cos del m is equal to 1 upon x c or let us write x c in the denominator and numerator it is V 1 cos delta plus V 2 and V m sin del m is equal to V 1 sin delta divided by x c. These are the two expressions we derive in the last lecture these are the two expression we derive at the last lecture, but uh, this uh, does not consider that we have a symmetrical line. So, for symmetrical line, for symmetrical 
lossless short line this expression would be as we know that for symmetrical line v1 is equal to v2 let us consider this is equal to v so this expressions will be vm and we also know that for symmetrical line del m is equal to delta by 2 okay so this is uh, we already derived in previous lecture when i discussed midpoint compensation of a transmission line so therefore this equations will be one is vm cos delta by 2 will be equal to v cos delta plus v by x c and v m sin delta by 2 will be equal to v sin delta divided by x c. So, just I replace this v 1 and v 2 equal to v and I also replace del m is equal to del by 2. Now, you know that where so, V m is what? V m is the uh, voltage at the midpoint of the line, midpoint of the line. Okay. Delta is the angular difference, angular difference of the voltage of the voltages at both end both ends of the line already i i if you could, if you can recall uh, this circuit uh, single line diagram that i had drawn that v1 uh, bending end voltage was v1 at an angle delta receiving end voltage one v1 v2 at an angle zero so angular difference between sending end voltage and receiving end voltage is delta which is uh, um, easy to understand. Okay. And we also have derived the expression for x c which is equal to if we can go back and see x c is equal to what x c is equal to this 2 minus b s v c x by 2. So, 2 minus b s v c multiplied by x by 2 where x is the reactance of the line or line reactance and b s v c is susceptance susceptance of the s v c which is connected at the midpoint of the uh, transmission line. Okay. So, this is already uh, known to us. Now, what we will be interested from this? We will be interested to find out the compensating power, compensating power, or compensating power flow expression due to SVC placement. at the midpoint of the line midpoint of the line what would be that that we already derived that p comp is equal to uh, v vm divided by x by 2 multiplied by sin del m now we we, we will put this values of this vm uh, del m. So, del m is here delta by 2. I just simply replace this del, del m by delta by 2 and we know that uh, uh, this v m sin delta by 2 is this. So, let us replace this. So, what we get it is if we replace this then this will be v square divided by uh, here x c would be there here in the denominator here x by 2 will be denominator. So, this will be x x c by 2 then sin delta. Okay. Now, if we consider that uh, this x x c by 2 the denominator that is this x x c by 2 
let us consider as x t. Okay. So, this expression would be then v square sin delta divided by x t. Okay. So, this is whereas, where we consider x t is equal to x x c by 2, x c is already we determined, x we know that it, that it is line reactance. Right. Now, what we will do is that we know the synchronizing power coefficient. So, we know what is synchronizing power coefficient? Synchronizing power coefficient expression is basically for uncompensated line, let us start with uncompensated line, let us assume that there is no, no SVC over here. So, that means no SVC, then this will be equal to del p del delta. So, which is you can see already we have uh, explained this in the lecture before. So, this d p d delta is basically representing the synchronizing power coefficient. So, synchronizing power coefficient is d p d delta, okay? del p del delta to be more correct. Similarly, for synchronizing power coefficient for SVC compensated line, SVC compensated line, where we have SVC at the midpoint, where we have a, a BC, SBC at the midpoint is equal to this del P comp del delta. And we have to show that there is a difference between these two expressions. And let us see what is that difference. Uh, if one is dp d delta, another is uh, dp comp del delta. Okay. Now, dp d delta can be easily uh, determined. I am coming to that. So, let us first uh, determine that uh, SVC compensated line uh, del uh, synchronizing power coefficient. So, to do so, so what we need to do? We need to uh, differentiate this p comp with respect to delta. Now, here you can see this p comp is a function of v which is regulated at the both end. So, v is constant over here. It is also function of this delta it is also function of x t. Right? Now, we have to see that this delta as you know delta depends upon the line loading. x t basically depends upon x t is a function of this x plus b s b c. So, let us write this. So, for s b c compensated line, compensated line what is actually we get? p comp is equal to v square divided by x t sin delta, where v is constant and regulated at the both end. This is what the property of symmetrical transmission line we consider and delta varies with varies with line loading. So, it is a variable and x t is a basically function of again that x and b s b c. Now, you know that x is constant because it is line reactance, it cannot be changed, but b s b c is can vary, it is a variable according to the control strategy of the s b c. I already explained that we can finally, model the s b c by a simple way variable susceptance. Now, the susceptance of that particular SVC can be controlled according to the our requirement. Okay. So, B SVC is variable, B SVC can be variable with respect to delta as well, uh, but x is remain constant, so as this V. Okay. So, therefore, what we have to see is we know that x t is function of x and B SVC. In fact, x t is equal to x x c by 2, where x c we know that it is equal to 
2 minus d s v c multiplied by x by 2. Okay. So, that is already determined in the last lecture uh, that is this expression. Okay. And uh, so, what we will do is that uh, we know that uh, x c will get change because v s v c will get change. Other than that x is constant, 2 is constant. So, it would have it would have been constant, but here we are interested to change the VSVC according to the loading so that we can improve the synchronizing power coefficient. Okay. So, first thing that we have to develop is uh, in this particular expression we have two variables one is delta another is x c. So, I have to uh, find out the dependency or uh, differential uh, equation of this d x c or del x c with del delta. Okay. In order to find out this, let us uh, find out the magnitude of this V m, the magnitude of this V m rather this V m because we already consider symmetrical lossless transmission line. So, we can write that V m is equal to root of V m cos del by 2 whole square plus V m sin del by 2 whole square. I think this is you understood because cos square del by 2 plus sin square del by 2 will be equal to 1. So, I can write this. Now, I, I will put the expression of V m cos delta by 2 from here, V m cos delta by 2 from here. So, what I will get? Let us see. So, this will be equal to V 1 plus cos delta divided by x c whole square plus this will be uh, I, I can put this expression of V m sin delta by 2 from this expression as well. So, what I can I will get here this is V sin delta divided by x c whole square and then square root of this will be equal to V m. Okay. I just simply replace this V m cos delta and V m sin delta from the previous expressions. Then what we will get this is equal to 1 upon x c root drop. So, we know that this is uh, if we just bring a v even outside. Uh, so, then uh, what we will see is or rather uh, yeah. So, I, 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 I can put this v outside. So, that this becomes equal to 1 plus cos delta square plus sin delta square or sin square delta. Now, what is this actually? You know that 1 plus cos delta square is basically can be split to V divided by x c root of 1 plus cos square delta plus 2 cos delta plus sin square delta. Okay. Now, again this uh, summation of cos square delta plus sin square delta will be equal to 1. So, therefore, this can be written as V by x c square root 2 plus 2 cos delta. Okay. All right. Now, from this expression I can write that V m square x c, I just put this x in the left hand side equation, V m square x c square is equal to V multiplied by or rather if we took take 2 outside. So, 2 V 1 plus cos delta. Okay. So, is it correct? Yeah. So, it is correct. Okay. So, this is what the correct expression. Now, what we will do is um, okay, one thing I, I, I did not do over here is that uh, if we just uh, take this square of this V m. So, x c will be square. So, as the square of the V. So, this will be the correct expression. Okay. Now, what we will do is that let us differentiate, differentiate both side both side with 
del del delta ok. So, what we will get in this side we will be having this expression as 2 v m square uh, v m square will be differentiated. So, you know that v m square v m can be considered to be independent of this del, but v m will also vary with del. So, therefore, uh, if we just differentiate it this, so this side will be 2 v m square del x e del delta and this side v is constant. So, therefore, uh, 2 v square plus 2 v square plus cos delta 2 v square is a constant. Uh, if we just differentiate with respect to delta, so this will be minus 2 v square sin delta. Okay. All right. So, therefore, from this we can find out del x e del delta is equal to minus v square sin delta divided by v m square. Here since we are differentiate with respect to this x e, so another x e term would be there. So, that x e square is differentiated with respect to delta that is 2 x e d x e d, d delta. So, one x e term would be here as well. Now, remember here this is done considering that v m will be kept constant irrespective of irrespective of loading or irrespective of the change of the delta. So, this this uh, differentiation is based upon the assumption that v m is kept constant irrespective of the line loading. Okay. So, which is one of the uh, you know goal for SVC placement at the midpoint of the transmission line to keep the midpoint voltage constant irrespective of the line loading. So, this uh, derivation is based upon this assumption as well that we considered v m constant irrespective of the line loading. Okay. So, this is one expression we get. Now, we know that this p comp is this and x t is basically function of x e as well. So, if we write it in the next page, so what we can write as, so from the previous page I can just copy this p comp is equal to p comp is equal to v square divided by x t sin delta. So, what is the expression? This expression gives you the expression for power flow of the midpoint SVC compensated short symmetrical lossless transmission line. Okay. So, where we can we know that x t is equal to x x e by 2. So, this can be written as v square sin delta divided by x x e divided by 2. Okay. So, as we said that here v is constant v is constant because uh, we, we consider symmetrical line for symmetrical line okay. and x is also constant because line reactance cannot be changed. It, it depends upon the line design and as long as uh, there is no change in the design, the line reactance will be constant, not change, unchanged. So, only parameter that will vary with respect to this delta is this x e and this delta itself. So, therefore, if we take uh, differentiation, let us say del p comp del delta. So, what we can write is it is equal to. So, here are two variables one is this delta itself, another is x e, which can vary with the line loading. So, therefore, we can write it as a if we assume that uh, first x e is constant. So, we can write this is equal to v square divided by x x e by 2 cos delta okay. plus uh, this v square let us consider delta constant now sin delta multiplied by x x e. Now, here you know that if we differentiate with respect to delta, 
that is of 1 upon x e. So, this will be equal to minus this will be equal to square this will be equal to 2. Okay. So, this multiplied by del x e del delta. Okay. So, this is the uh, differentiation of x e with respect to del delta. Okay. Now, what we can write this let us write v square cos delta divided by x e x x e by 2 which let us consider that this is x t. So, this is x t then this part is v square sin delta divided by x x square by 2 multiplied by uh, this uh, d del x e del delta. Now, what we will do? We will put this uh, del x e del delta expression what we got in the last page. So, that is this. So, if I copy and uh, this expression there. So, since there is a negative, so this will be positive multiplied by uh, let us see what it was v square sin delta it was v square sin delta divided by v m square x e v m square x e. I just simply put this del x e del delta at this particular expression. Now, we will keep on simplifying this. How we can uh, keep on simplifying? So, this will be as it is this will be v square cos delta divided by x t where you know x t is equal to what it is equal to x x c by 2 okay. and plus this uh, v square sin delta and v square sin delta are already there. So, we can write v square sin delta square and v m and x c square are there. So, just I am just keeping v m and x c and v square sin delta within a square that I can write right. Then what we will get this uh, multiplied by 1 upon this x would be there this x by 2 would be there this x c would be there. So, this multiplied by x x c divided by 2. Okay. Now, what is that x x c by divided by 2 that can be written as uh, x t. So, we can write it again this is equal to v square cos delta divided by x t plus v square sin delta divided by v m x c whole square multiplied by 1 upon x t. So, that is what the synchronous power coefficient that is what the synchronous power coefficient of the symmetrical lossless short transmission line okay that is what the this is what the uh, synchronizing power coefficient synchronizing power coefficient of midpoint HPC compensated compensated symmetrical symmetrical lossless short transmission line. Okay. So, this is what the expression of synchronizing power coefficient of symmetrical lossless transmission line. Now, we can do uh, further derivation of this. How can we further derivation? So, let us consider because you know that we already know that this v square sin delta divided by x t is equally equal to p comp. Okay. So, we can write this as a v square cos delta divided by x t plus this v square sin delta 
v square sin delta divided by v m. I am just multiplying x x c x by 2 inside this square. So, what I have to do is I have to I have since I have divided uh, this x by 2 here. So, I have to multiply x square by 4 here uh, divided by x t. Okay. Now, what we know that this v square sin delta divided by this, this is nothing but x t which is this. So, this can be written as p comp. So, this is equal to this is equal to v square cos delta divided by x t plus. So, this is basically p comp. So, p comp divided by v m whole square multiplied by x square divided by 4 x t. Okay. So, this expression we got from uh, for the synchronizing power coefficient of the midpoint is S V C compensated line. So, this is what our expression final expression is. Okay. Now, what was the expression for uh, uncompensated line? Uncompensated line this del p del delta was how much? We know that uh, here for uncompensated line, what would be the expression of p? Look, look at this uh, single line diagram. So, for uncompensated line, for uncompensated line, line, what would be the expression for p? p will be equal to this v 1 v 2 divided by x sin delta. And since we considered v 1 and v 2 are equal for symmetrical line, so this will be expression of the uh, uh, power flow for uncompensated line since v 1 is equal to v 2. Okay. That we are since v 1 is equal to v 2 for a symmetrical line. Okay. So, if we just differentiate with respect to del delta, so what we will get v square x is here constant because v is the voltage of both end which is regulated by the consideration of symmetrical line x is constant. So, therefore, del p del delta will be equal to v square x cos delta. So, we can write this is equal to v square by x cos delta. So, this is synchronizing coefficient for uncompensated line, uncompensated line and this is what the synchronous power coefficient for compensated line. Okay. So, what is the difference of these two? So, you can see if we just compare this with this, this is having an additional term okay, which means that uh, the synchronizing power coefficient when we have midpoint SVC compensated line will be higher than the uncompensated line. So, therefore, the net increase of synchronizing power coefficient coefficient for SVC compensated line would be equal to this minus this. So, this will be equal to V square cos delta divided by x t minus V square cos delta divided by x plus this plus p comp divided by v m square multiplied by x square 4 x t. So, this can be written as if we take v square cos delta common. So, this can be written as 
x 60 x minus x t plus p com p m whole square multiplied by x square 4 x t. Okay. So, this is what the net increase of synchronizing power coefficient. Okay. So, this is something is very important to understand. So, so when we have a SVC at the midpoint uh, of a transmission line, irrespective of whether it is a short line or long line, uh, it will increase the synchronizing power coefficient. Here we consider the short line, but this can be shown that uh, this is uh, the same thing in the happen uh, to be true for the long line as well. Okay. So, so important remark over here is that remark is that the above exercise or above derivation shows the presence of SVC in a transmission line, in a lossless transmission line. line improves, improves or increases, increases the synchronizing power coefficient. which is an important parameter in transient stability. Okay. And I already I discussed the significance of synchronizing power coefficient is that it measures the, the steepness of the line, okay. uh, how much steep it is uh, due to the fault and uh, similar kind of large disturbances. Okay. So, that is eventually improved with the SVC compensated line that we can mathematically show here. Okay. Now, here one thing that you can see I, I, I discuss that uh, here our assumption in the whole discussion was that uh, the S role of the SVC will be to keep the midpoint voltage constant irrespective of the loading in fact. And our all the previous studies are also based upon this consideration only that the role of the SVC is to keep the midpoint voltage constant irrespective of the loading. Okay. But this has some practical deficiency which I already discussed. First of all that uh, to do so whatever the size of SVC we require that will be very large and that would be practically infeasible that is one of the bottleneck of that. Okay. But apart from that it is also uh, not advisable that always you need to maintain the midpoint voltage constant. Okay. There are some occasions. Uh, SVC can also be useful in modulating the midpoint voltage and these are of very dynamic change and these are of very short duration change. So, therefore, we will also see the role of the SVC in modulation of uh, midpoint voltage and thereby its impact on uh, this power system stability. So, okay. so, so far my discussion I, I I considered that role of the SVC in improving uh, this or enhancing the uh, transient stability in terms of increasing the stability margin, in terms of the increase in what we call synchronizing power coefficient. But apart from that, it can also be useful uh, for uh, creating damping of the uh, system. So, those things we will be discussing. Uh, mostly in the next lecture, I, I want to give some of the feel or some of the core idea of this right now. Okay. So, this is the first uh, remark, so, uh, this is one of the remark and second remark was SVC 
can also increase increase the stability margin stability margin so those things i already established with mathematical analysis and the conceptual idea now what we will see over here is that the rule of svc SPC in power system damping. Okay. Because if you can remember at the very first lecture of when I started this uh, module that is application of SPC, I said that uh, SPC can increase the steady state power transfer capacity which I have already shown. Now, I have shown that how can SPC impact on this transient stability of the power system. Then uh, uh, what I am, I am going to show right now and then in also I will continue in the next lecture is how it is useful in damping the power system oscillation. Now, to do so, we have to come out from the idea that uh, SVC would be uh, always maintained uh, this this midpoint uh, voltage constant. Uh, rather, uh, we, we need to understand that. So, to damp the power system oscillation, oscillations SVC can be useful in particular particular by providing or by enhancing appropriate damping okay so this is something very important and to do so we need to modulate the voltage of SVC. Okay. So, far our discussions was limited uh, to the fact that we always planned that SVC uh, should be uh, capable to hold the midpoint voltage constant, but this will hold true for steady state analysis, but for uh, dynamic cases uh, in particular to uh, enhance the damping, we, we need this SVC uh, to, to modulate the voltage at the midpoint uh, and thereby it can improve the damping. How it can improve? Let us see pictorically. So, let us again revisit this idea uh, with this uh, P delta characteristics. Suppose this is the P delta characteristics for uncompensated line. Okay. So, this is suppose P delta characteristics for uncompensated line. Now, this suppose this is what the mechanical power, this is what P mechanical and this is what the operating point. Now, uh, also I have seen that uh, this if we consider that SPC is designed 
to hold the midpoint voltage constant, then it will uh, revise this p delta characteristic something like this. Okay. So, this is uh, for SVC compensated line providing the uh, ideal case providing that SD, uh, SVC is capable of holding. So, uh, ideal case in the means that, that uh, in the meaning that SVC is capable of capable of holding meet point voltage constant. Okay. So, when we will design the SVC to hold the midpoint voltage constant, this will be the characteristics. However, that SVC can be also modeled as uh, as a fixed capacitor or a fixed inductor mode. So, this is the characteristic corresponds to SVC operation at the fixed capacit capaci uh, fixed inductor mode. So, here uh, SVC operating at fi uh, operating as fixed inductor mode. Okay. Why it is so already I explained in the uh, I, I already mathematically derived this expression and I, I explained over here in inductive mode of operation the characteristics will be something like that. Okay. Now, so for inductive mode of operation it will be something like that. Okay. Now, for fixed, this is fixed inductor mode of operation and when uh, the SVC will be operating as a fixed capacitor mode, the characteristics will be something like this. So, this is for SVC operating as fixed capacitor mode or fixed capacitor mode of operation. Okay. Now, one thing that you can see over here is already I explained that theoretical maximum limit of the stability is this that is corresponds to delta is equal to pi by 2. This is this is delta is equal to pi. So, this is what the theoretical maximum stability limit. Okay. Now, you can see that this hatch area, this hatch area beyond this operating point represents the deceleration area. This hatch area is basically representation of deceleration area. Okay. Now, what is that stands for? So, this, this hatch area hatch area is representation of representation of rotor deceleration. Okay. So, where that rotor, rotor decelerates. Okay. Now, why it decelerates? Because in this, this particular region, the electrical power is above the mechanical power. Okay. So, that is why rotor will decelerate. Okay. However, this, this particular area, this particular area is representing rotor acceleration. This particular area is basically representing rotor acceleration. In fact, this was hatched in different way. In order to avoid the confusion, I, I hatched the way it is shown in the figure. So, this is the representation of rotor acceleration. 
Okay. Now, higher and higher this area would be better, uh, you know, uh, actually without damping, uh, if we consider the line, uh, whole line to be lossless, then the rotor will keep on accelerating and decelerating and it will change from the point of this, uh, this from the operating point to the fault clearing or maximum value of delta. It will keep on in, uh, increasing the value of delta and it will keep on reducing. Now, we need some sort of damping of this. So, basically if we uh, uh, for no damping, for no damping what it would be the if we plot this delta with respect to time, then it would be something like that. So, it will accelerate and decelerate and it will like that. We need some sort of damping to this, so that it will quickly settle to some point and that is what uh, this called power system damping, that is what called power system damping. Now, what is that role of SVC is, it can uh, momentarily change uh, or uh, modulate the voltage, so that you can increase this, this deceleration area and also this acceleration area. How it is possible you can see instead of operating it a uh, ideal case when uh, it will be responsible to hold the midpoint voltage constant, if we uh, uh, use it as a fixed capacitor mode. Now, what is the role of the fixed capacitor? Fixed capacitor mode means it will momentarily increase the voltage at which the SVC is placed then it will get some uh, additional deceleration area like this. This is what the additional deceleration area if momentarily if we this is what the additional area additional area by momentarily increase the voltage at which this SVC is placed by operating as a fixed capacitor mode. Similarly, uh, here also when uh, we need damping to this end, so instead of using it for ideal case, let if we use for fixed uh, inductor mode, what in fixed inductor mode does, it momentarily reduce the voltage and uh, to do so, you will get this is the additional area if we operate at fixed uh, inductor mode. Uh, so, uh, instead of keeping this SVC voltage constant, if we can modulate it, we can improve the system damping okay? and that is exactly done by this SVC. In fact, that is done by STATCOM as well, when I will discuss this, I will again revisit and show you that the same discussion will be hold for uh, the STATCOM, static uh, synchronous compensator as well. Okay? So, therefore, two important comment that you can uh, uh, note down, one is number one. SVC with voltage modulation modulation or rather I should say that momentary voltage modulation modulation can provide damping of power angle oscillations. Okay. So, we will revisit this idea in the next class once again and show you how can you model this SVC and you can uh, effectively provide damping of the oscillation or damping of the uh, oscillation of the power angle uh, in more detail. Okay. okay. So, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.